the step four trial was uh, a weight management trial. It was looking at uh, the difference between sustaining semaglutide 2.4 milligrams and getting changed to placebo. So it's a unique trial called a withdrawal trial in which all subjects receive semaglutide 2.4 milligrams once weekly for 20 weeks. And then the subjects were re-randomized in a two to one fashion. So twice as many subjects got semaglutide 2.4 milligrams and the other subjects got placebo. It was blinded, randomized, and we looked at their weights at the end of 68 weeks. The primary goal of the study was to look at what happens during that 48 week period after you stop the semaglutide. And so what we did see is that first of all, all subjects at 20 weeks starting at randomization had lost about 10.6%. And then those that continued semaglutide lost an additional 7.9%. Uh, and those who got changed to placebo then actually started to regain and regained about 6.9%. So there's really two, two main impacts to this trial. One is that people who continued semaglutide continued to actually lose weight. They did not regain their weight and actually sustained it while using the medication. Um, whereas what we typically see for people, the people who got switched to placebo actually regained weight. And so the net difference in weight loss was about 17.4%, which all of that is actually quite important from a clinical perspective, because we really, as, as physicians, we really need our patients to be able to lose 10%, 15% to really make a big difference in the comorbidities that are associated with obesity. What's the main lesson from this particular step trial? Well, I think the main lesson um, really is, uh, is probably two things. One is we need chronic treatment of obesity. We need to recognize obesity as a chronic disease, first of all. Weight regulation is incredibly complicated. It's complicated physiology. There's all kinds of hormonal impact that drives regain, which is what most people experience when they go on a dietary intervention and they cut back their calories. So what the medication does is it actually signals back to the brain, I'm not as hungry, I don't have these cravings, and it allows you to actually get to a much lower weight and improve those comorbidities. So it's important for chronic therapy. It's also an important breakthrough for this particular medication targeting the brain and allowing us to see much greater weight loss than other medicines that are currently on the market. Why did you choose 20 weeks as the point at which you randomized the participants? Well, I wasn't one of the original designers of the protocol. However, 20 weeks is, is typically what um, has been used for the titration to get to the 2.4 milligram dose. It had already been uh, with previous studies with a phase two trial that was done. It was determined that about 2.4 milligrams once weekly was sort of the dose that they were going to target. So they really wanted to see, could the subjects get to this target dose? Would people make it to the target dose? And then what if you continued that dose compared to people coming off? So they just picked that target dose for the titration of the medication. And then at that point, they looked at what happened when people came off. Okay, so the idea was to just get past the titration period rather than waiting until you'd got the majority of the weight loss effect. Yeah, the, 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 the goal was not let's, let's get the most weight possible and then go to maintaining. The goal was let's get to the dose that we have decided is a good effective dose and then let's see what happens. I'm not sure they anticipated that people would continue to lose more weight on the average. It wasn't designed that way. That's probably more of a, a surprising, nice, pleasant finding, but they didn't design it that way to hit a target. It was target dose. Do you think it would be useful to find out what happens if you take them out to say, just thinking of the curve that you got in step one to, to the point where it starts to level off and then re-randomizing. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think now that we have these results, I mean, first of all, there are there is a two-year study that's being done right now for people who uh, would be on actually semaglutide for two years. So we will be looking at that data, but the study's not done. So that'll answer somewhat of your question. And yes, you could design trials that were designed to target, say, until a particular person reached whatever their sort of net weight loss would be. That is going to vary individually as well. 
So I don't think any, I mean, I've been working with people for about 20 years. I don't, I don't think there's any way you could say this person will definitely lose 10%, this person will lose 20%. You have to go with what the individual response is to a given drug, because there's a lot more factors involved, right? Do you think there was any risk of accidental unblinding when people switched to placebo and really felt that there was a difference? Um, I suppose that's always an impact. The one thing about semaglutide is a very long half-life. And so you wouldn't really notice it immediately. Also, people had lost sufficient weight in the sense that I think they were feeling quite good, feeling pretty empowered by behavior. And the truth is most of us in research have always been fooled by somebody who's on placebo and we think they're on active drug. So the placebo effect is actually strong, even for the blinded researcher. So you don't always know. So I don't think that was a big factor here, to be honest with you. I mean, obviously, these things are always potential factors, but I don't think that it was a, a big factor here in terms of affecting the net impact of the medication.